2021 is an exciting time if you like old Ford Escorts. Why? Well, because there's a manufacturer out there who's made a brand new one and it comes in a kit and you can build it yourself, albeit one tenth scale. Yeah, that's right, you can buy a radio controlled brand new Tamiya Mark II Ford Escort. But don't worry, because there's another company who does the same thing. And that is why I'm in the middle of nowhere in Wales with a hat on, the home of rallying. Because by the power of rallying, we have a brand new car that looks like an Escort, but it isn't. Oh, be still my beating rally heart. That is an original Mark II Ford Escort, or facelifted, which is why it has a Ford Oval. That is an original Ford Escort, which is why it says Ford on it. This is not strictly a Ford, which is why it doesn't have a Ford badge on it. It has a Mark II badge on it. It's an MST Mark II. It's not a Ford. It's not a Ford Escort. It's an MST Mark II. I promise. I'm all for a walk or a cycle in the Welsh hills, but it doesn't get more Welsh than driving a Mark II Escort around these rural roads. It really doesn't. I'll let it warm up. Oh, cattle grid. I forgot to say welcome to the Late Break Show, but you knew that. You already knew that. got me Escort Motorsport Tools <clears throat> catalogue, I love a catalogue, and you can get anything you want, you know, you can get body panels, motorsport, gauges, seats, suspension, axles, gearbox, blah, 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 but super casual, first page. Do you want a brand new body shell? Do you want it in standard? Do you want it in group four uh, rally spec? Do you want it in ultimate modern spec? It's up to you, Mark 1 or Mark 2, no problem, love it. And that's what this is. This is the very first one. So this is the test mule. And it's the same pretty much as any kind of motorsporty, in this case, Group 4, because of the Arches, Mark II, two-door car. The Mark I and the Mark II Escort were kind of the same mechanically. And that's why Motorsport Tools are just finishing off now a brand new shell of a Mark I. The other thing about Escorts is you realise how small they are compared to modern cars. I bet this is shorter than a modern day Fiesta. I'll have to do the calcs. So the back end in this instance is converted to coilovers, which is a pretty common six link conversion. The original Escorts, so these boys here, would have leaf springs. Live axle still, but on leaves. You can still put leaves on your new, old, not an Escort, an MST Mark II. It's entirely up to you. And that's why this feature really isn't about this car in particular. It's about the, the, the concept of being able to either buy one and build your own from a kit, like a Tamiya radio controlled Escort, or just phone up Motorsport uh, tools and order one to your own spec. You can hear the vibration through the gear knob. Listen. Within five miles of driving it, you, you realize I'm just reminded of the fact that an Escort a sorted escort. You kind of wear it. You, you, you wear it like a like a decent jacket. And because it's quite a small car, it's perfect for back lanes. I do think this is the future for enjoyable driver's cars because it has to be. Who needs 200 mile an hour stuff? It's just, it's an absolutely epic Welsh day. It's so cold, but it doesn't look cold. Every corner is exciting. And I think 
as I'm going over there through this village, what you realise is that in a car like this, is everything, all the controls are so engaging and fun as a driver. And you can be doing 50, 60 mile an hour. You don't have to be doing 130. You know, I'm not, I'm not Ari Vatanen. I'm not Malcolm Wilson. So this is your family farm, right, where we are? Yes. So in the not too distant past, there would have been sheep or cows in this shed? Yeah, these were basically livestock buildings yeah. for the farm. And then um, as, as the, the business grew, you know, we needed more warehouse space. And, uh, <laughs> so you've, so thrown, you've thrown the animals out onto the hillside and yeah. you've insulated these, these barns. And this is yeah. where all these parts get picked and packed and dispatched and yeah. now there will be a point where you can order your brand new Escort. Yes. Um, and just down the road is where you build the, exactly. the shells and assemble the cars, which yes. we'll go to later. Matt. Yeah. So what's, what's under the bonnet of this particular car? You said it's a bit mild, and I think your idea of mild is probably my idea of yeah. fairly Larry. Yeah, so this one's a, a 2.5 Duratec. Okay, um, two and a half, nice. Yeah, on, on throttle bodies. It's running a, a life racing ECU. <sighs> So um, it's about 200 horsepower, which uh, and it's got loads of torque. 200? Yeah. To, see, that's quite a lot, given that the curb weight of this will not be a lot. No, it's probably, it's probably under a ton. Probably under, yeah, just under a ton, yeah. So that's going to be pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, it's it might not be, it won't be as quick as your rally cars, but... No, but it's still, still quick enough for, you know, for the road. It's, yeah. It's, it's plenty of power, yeah. Do you know what I really love? I love the fact that although that is a brand new engine and I know it's got coil packs and stuff, it still kind of looks quite classic. Yeah, yeah. No, it it's works, it's got the old, well. old style radiator. Mm -hmm. I don't know, that it, you guys just seem to make these things look so old school, but mm. yet so much new school is going on in here. Yeah. It's brilliant. This is a class as a sort of fast road, rally car-ish. In other words, it's road legal, it's group four shell, so it's got extra bracing, obviously the arches, a couple of other bits. This particular car I think is running on Bill Stein suspension, which is your entry level. You could option it with Olin's, with Riga. This has a six speed, H pattern, Mazda MX-5 gearbox, again, brand new gearbox, brand new engine, brand new. Six link Atlas back axle, AP racing, four pot calipers, brakes are amazing. It's a, an Aladdin's cave, choose your wheels, choose your suspension, choose whether you want a roll cage, choose what seats you want, choose your gearbox, your pedal box, your steering wheel. Oh, and uh, yeah, choose whether you want one of them under the bonnet or not, if you've got fairly deep pockets. That's the great thing about this. You can build it, or they can build it, whatever spec you want. That's the joy of having sort of the following of an Escort, all these aftermarket bits. Oh, I forgot to say, if you're wondering why there's a Volvo in a room full of Escorts, that's because this Volvo was actually a proper WRC recce car, as used by loads of World Rally uh, champions over the years, taken all around the world to all the different stages and the navigators use it to make their pace notes. So that's a proper weapon with pedigree. These are Carwin's own personal cars. He's got a bit of a stash. He's not sure what he's going to do with these. These are all stock Mark IIs with the face lifted front. Those are his motorsport Mark IIs over there, the blue one being his first build. So you can order. I feel like I'm going, like walking around a car auction with an auction catalogue. You can order it in left or right hand drive. Because this is more of a rally spec, it's got the bucket seats with no carpets, no headlining, and a roll cage, and two, two seats, no back seat. But you can order it as a normal road car, upholstered more casually, less racy. It's really entirely up to you. This has the electric power steering, which is attached to the column down there. And because this was a development car, it's a bit rough and ready in places, which Motorsport Tools wanted me to point out. Usual motorsport fuel tank, obviously available from motorsport tools. Fuel pump, electric fuel pump, the Bosch ones there. And everything else is just spare wheel well with, with, with nothing in it. 
Again, this is all bare because this is a sort of rally, road rally spec. This could be carpeted. You could have whatever you want in here, any color, any level of soundproofing, if that was your bag. Spoiler, again, most probably optional. But if you're gonna go Ari Vatnen spec, you probably will want it. You can have the flared or bubble arches. You've got the genuine iconic mini light made in England. Uh, 13 inch wheels, they have to be 13s. They've got to be 13s. You can have a bespoke fully trimmed interior, obviously painted a color of your choice. Um, oh, and you can obviously go for classic bucket seats or you can go for race seats with three point, uh, six point FIA harnesses, if that's your bag. Oh my gosh, it's good, isn't it? I'm gonna have to stop looking at the configurator now. Put your phone on airplane mode, Johnny, and just for goodness sake, carry on presenting. All right, I, got, I think I've got something in my eye. You know, and I don't even think the Mark II Escort's a particularly pretty car. It's okay. I think the Mark I is a prettier car, so I would personally go for a Mark I shell, but it's the drivability of these things. It's, it's people seeing them being flung down these kind of lanes in the 70s and the 80s and today on historic rallies the legacy that these cars leave behind is so strong that's why people like motorsport tools have bothered to go to the effort to buy to build all new shells because the interest warrants it if you're a regular of the Late Break Show, you will see an old video from a friend of mine called Russell Lord, who was the Lord of Ford. Hey. Show me your workshop. Let's go around the back and do it. Who built a beautiful um, scale Mark II Escort rally car out of gold and platinum and diamonds. He left me a voicemail when he found out that I was coming to drive this. Hello, John. Just my quick opinion on what Motorsport Tools have done. I think they've recreated the best rally car of all time. It was, to a degree, a budget car, but it's still going strong today, and it will do for many years. And let's face it, look at the money and the, and the time I invested into doing what I did. Without a doubt, it's the best. And what Motorsport Tools have done is the nuts. Well done. If you go for a motorsport, ultimate spec of one of these MSTs you you could easily you could easily be spending north of a hundred thousand quid but you're getting a brand 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 new car I think there's a whole breed of people out there who just want a good driver's car and they don't necessarily care about a car's historic heritage Pedigree. This is not a 70s Escort. None of it is, really. But it's not really trying to be. Yeah, it's just a four cylinder Ford motor on throttle bodies. But there's, there's magic, there is some magic. A sorted Escort in rural Wales, you're sort of treated like royalty. You almost get the, uh, you know, the keys to the town. Twisty roads ahead. Okay then. We've come over to MST's main factory area and this is the building where they actually assemble the shells for the Mark 1s and Mark 2s and also do the customer builds. That car there is the very nearly completed first Mark 1 complete car. It's absolutely gorgeous. Do you know what's weird though? Is that that is a newer car than that. And yes, that is a real WRC Ford Focus. Ex Marcus Gronholm, I believe. It's not for sale. But this will be for sale because this is gonna be their demonstrator car. So just like the Mark II that I've driven, this is a, a Mark I, but this one's got slightly different spec in so much as the engine, for example, is a BDG um, twin cam engine. So it's more of a sort of historic uh, motor, two litre. Um, on throttle bodies, but still got that classic look. Light bar, rally, rally lights, because you know you have to. Because it was an all new shell, you can see it's just 
It's at the stage where there's no interior in it yet. There's still some door cards going in. This is going to be a more luxurious car. That car that I've driven is more of a sort of an engineering mule. This is going to be a bit more plush. You've got leather stitch dash top. You've got a cage going in, but you know, it's color coded. It's got some nice trim and stuff but down here. AP racing um, discs, just like the, uh, the Mark II that I've driven. But you can see the back axle better because this is on axle stands and you can see the detail because everything's new. You're so used to seeing rot and repair panels that are put in, but there aren't any because it's new. It's just freaky. You come around the back, you've got a modern, modern fuel tank in there. It's all painted satin black in this instance. There's your, uh, your filler. There's your dry sump because the engine's a dry sump engine. But again, all of these different options are up to the customer. But this car is particularly special because it's the first one of the Mark 1s and it's going to be a little bit more luxurious. I'm very much looking forward to seeing how, how this one will turn out. And also, being completely honest, the Mark 1 shape is probably a bit more appealing to me. But you know, beauty's in the eye of the cup holder or whatever they say. It does look good though, doesn't it? You could say, Johnny, but it's 65 grand upwards to buy a turnkey brand new thing like this. That's a lot for an Escort. But what are you comparing it to? I mean, I don't know, a hot a Cayman GT4, an Alpine? Two Yaris GRs? I don't know. If there wasn't a tight speed limit on this hill road, I would I'd be going a little harder, but look, look at it. My word. I think we get we get bogged down in numbers with modern cars. 200 horsepower is, is, is just not special in a modern car, but a modern car weighs double this, you know? Under a ton. And tons of fun. Do you know what? This part of Wales, you've got really old, chunky stone buildings, but you often see things like wind farms and solar. It's that old and new resto mod. But this isn't a resto mod, is it? Because it is brand new. It's, a, it's an old silhouette. But all new. It's a hat tip. To 70s forest rally stages and, you know, the car that's worshipped in Essex and Wales. Come here, come here, come here. So that's a Mark II in progress. That's another different customer's Mark II. That's an, that's an actual Ford, an actual 70s Ford. This, look at this. This is what it looks like when they start assembling all of those pressings and those panels for a brand new car. This is a brand new Mark I, you can tell by the doggy bone grill. And, and this is in a really exciting part of the sort of skeletal pro process. So you can see that the new roof skins um, on, A pillars, scuttle, inner wings, strut tops, radiator panel, light panel valance, and then if you come in around here, got brand new doors in black primer. In there is the starting point, the sort of chassis pressings and the full floor pan. And then of course there's a right hand drive car, but you can choose a left hand drive car. And they'll typically take about two weeks, I think, to do a bare shell. And this shell I think is already pre-sold. They've got about eight orders for Mark I bare shells at the moment. There's no extra boxes, look, you can see down here, standard arches. And that, that little Mark I, little kick up there, that little Coke bottle kick, it's nice. Isn't it? All new, all new pressings, every single bit. When I see a car like this, I think what's great is some people just want the look of a classic, but they don't want the reality of buying an old car, chasing maybe certain problems that an old car might have, having to remedy rust from a car that's lived for 50 years. You don't have to. You don't have to buy 1968, 1969, 1970 Mark I Escort. You can buy that. And that is your blank canvas. 
Do you go rally? Do you go luxury? Do you go fast road? Do you go roll cage? Do you go leather? I don't bloody know. I suppose you could convert a car like this to electric. You could buy an Escort shell and you could, you could EV resto mod it. And I think that could have its place. I think that could be really cool. On the other hand, the induction and the exhaust roar of a, of a hot four cylinder like this, or even you could go right up to a Millington or a, a BDA type engine twin cam and it's never going to sound rubbish. You could build a brand new one and drive it every day. You don't have to preserve it because it's not old. You could have a classic car for the weekend and this could be your everyday car. Oh, I could have this with a nicely stitched cabin with Bluetooth hands free. Why not? As the future progresses, I've said it before, I do think that we will crave weekend and special occasion analog cars to drive now and again. And that sort of thing will be exactly this. Or a tamer version of this with a little bit more soundproofing. Let me show you this, this is quite cool. This, I've been told, is, is like the mothership of the project. In order to get the panels made properly for the Mark I, this is a 1968 Mark I, UK right-hand drive car, in really, really good condition. And this has been the car that they've used as the template for everything. So it doesn't look much, but actually this is the sort of the original kind of queen bee for the, uh, for the project. And it's still being used now just to finalize tolerances and stuff like that. And that jig downstairs obviously has to match this to make sure everything is right. It's bizarre, I used to go to primary school with a mate and his mum and she drove one exactly this color, that color interior in the bad old days when there were no seatbelts and stuff. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this episode of The Late Break Show as much as I've enjoyed making it. Days like this feel special. They really do. Look at that. My God. There we go. Tuck it in. <laughs> If you want to know what driver engagement and reward behind the wheel feels like and what it's like to kind of wear a car rather than sit on a car, really be part of the car's skin, this is like that. This is it. Just so much fun. Thank you so much for watching The Late Break Show. I hope you've really enjoyed this. I want to say thank you to Motorsport Tools who have well, been nagging to, to get the first drive of this. Thank you, guys. And um, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to something old, something new, something electric, something piston, cattle grid. <laughs> <laughs>